Hi and welcome, I'm Reverend Allie Bierman and I'm so glad you joined me here today for our gathering of Metaphysical Ministry International. Well, what's a metaphysical ministry all about? It's the philosophical end of quantum physics, the whole science of how you create your reality, how everything is energy and how you affect that energy by what you focus on and what you hold and what you see and what you intend to see. The fact is that 99% of what's going on in the world happens beyond your five senses. You can't see, touch, hear, taste, or smell it. So you need to learn if you want to exhibit, well not exhibit, if you want to experience. If you want to experience all of life, you need to understand the different dimensions so you can partake in them. Have a more rich experience of life. We begin every week with a happy share. Why a happy share? We want to create the habit of happiness, of feeling good, of feeling calm, of feeling peaceful. Go on over to the happy happyshare and when you get there, write down what your happy share is for the day. Go back every day for 28 days, create that habit. Because you know what happens when you share your happy share? You get to relive all those feelings. Your subconscious mind can't tell the difference between what's real and what's imagined. So all those feel-good chemicals are going to flood through your body again. What's your happy share this week? My happy share is that I'm making this video because up until about 15 minutes ago, I really didn't feel very well and I didn't think I was going to get to make this video today. And I'm going to tell you exactly what that's all about. Normally, I do a meditation this week. Instead of that, I want to talk to you today. I want to talk to you about an issue that may be impacting you, and it may be impacting someone you know. And I'll tell you this for sure, on a prevention basis, it definitely impacts you. So stay tuned, keep watching, because you're going to learn something that's going to protect you. It's going to allow you to live in happiness and keep living in happiness and success. So what am I talking about? Well, last week, I finally found the answer to some health issues that I've been having for probably a year. Some of them started a couple years ago. Not sure if they were related or not, but anyway, I've been going for the last year to people all over the country looking for somebody who could figure out what was going on with me. I usually go to alternative health care people. I was feeling so desperate, I actually went to doctors. That tells you something. That tells you that everybody who was seeing me could not figure out what was going on. Well, last week, I found out what was going on. And what was going on? It was a brain tumor. So, what I want you to know about today is what happens when something goes wrong with your brain and what happens when you create a tumor. See, what I realized was this is the second time that I've created a trauma to my brain. So don't you think it's about time I found out what the heck am I doing? What is the brain about? What do I need to learn here that I didn't learn the first time 15 years ago in the attack? Here's what the brain's about. Your brain. It's your computer. It's your true self. What's your true self? Your true self is who you were when you were born before all the people in your life fed all these programs into you because until you're about six or seven, you're not able to keep anything out and it all pours in. And when those programs create, all these programs in your subconscious mind, they create what's running you. They create your self-image. Well, 15 years ago, when I was attacked, that person who attacked me hit me in the head. She hit me repeatedly in the head. Not in my stomach, not in my knee. She hit me in the head. Why? All of my life, I've been a composer and an artist. All my life. I was raising my kids. I was writing the music for them. I was doing the paintings for them. I was sharing paintings. I was making greeting cards all my life. I resolved every issue in my life by writing a song. If I wanted to teach somebody something, I wrote a song. After my kids went off to school, I stopped writing the music. 
because I went out to become a psychotherapist and I was good at it. But you know what? I was working with chronically mentally ill people and I couldn't exactly sit down and write a song and sing them a song to help them. I had to work differently. I couldn't do some art to teach them something to help them to expand. I did on a limited basis, but in the big picture, it wasn't how I was able to work in the facility where I was. So what happened? I went out of alignment. I went out of alignment with my true self. I stopped nurturing my soul. And you can't go on living when you're out of alignment, when you stop nurturing your soul. So that's why my brain became vulnerable. That's why the attack hit my brain. That was 15 years ago. Well, what happened now, the 15 years later, I have to have another brain issue. This time, what happened was I had gone out of alignment looking, I wasn't trusting that I could make a living by teaching happiness by teaching happiness through music and through art. And when you stop trusting, you stop doing. And I started looking other ways to make money. And I started listening to other people. I started ignoring my values of what was important to me in making money. I went clear off my track of living as my true self. Now when I first got the news, that I had a brain tumor, my first reaction was I was scared as heck. I was alone in my car, driving in great frustration, trying to find the place to vote for our local elections. Couldn't find it, was buried back somewhere in a subdivision, no signs, and phone rings. The next day, I stepped back and I looked and I thought, holy mackerel, it's the second brain trauma. I gotta find out what is the brain about and what is a tumor all about. And then I said to myself, you know what? This is a huge gift. I didn't learn the first time how to live for my true self. Working in network marketing companies wasn't living for my heart. Working in the mortgage business wasn't living for my heart. Working as a real estate investor wasn't living for my heart, no matter how much effort I made to talk myself into liking it. I didn't like it. I didn't like it. I didn't like it. I didn't like it. It was totally out of alignment with who I am, with my values, with why I'm here in the world. So that's why I created something with my brain. Well, what about the tumor piece? And a tumor, by the way, what I'm going to tell you, wherever it is in your body, you see what's going on with the issues at that part of your body, and you'll understand why a tumor is a manifestation of unresolved issues. Unresolved issues. Their hurts, their emotional sorrows, their pains, their sadness. And how do they get there? From events that happened in your life that you interpreted as painful that you need to forgive. Nobody does anything to you. Nobody. No, because nobody can touch your spirit. You are a divine spirit having a human experience. Yes, they can hurt your physical body. But you know what? When you hold on to those issues, they become tumors. Here's how it happens. You are an energy body. You have an energy body. You're in a human body right now. And every little incident, every hurt, Blip goes right into this little, let's call it a pouch. And then the next injury comes along. And you don't forgive the person. Blip, another one. And then another, and another, and another. And eventually, things burst into a physical form. It starts out as energy. If you clear it while it's still energy, you don't ever have to suffer from the physical ailment but you don't know it's there because you're not paying attention to exactly what happened to me. So as soon as I recognized, holy mackerel, I created this whole big packet of not forgiving people. I thought I forgave people and I did, but not for everything that happened in my life. I was still holding all these things. 
that I needed to clear. How do I know that? Because when I recognized this was going on, I sat down. I spent an hour and a half making a list of everything in my life that I had never forgiven. Some of them were big things that I just kind of forgot about. Some of them were seemingly little tiny things. But you know what? It isn't a little tiny thing once it's been in your energy for a long time and solidifies into physical form. How do you forgive somebody? First of all, you go in, you recognize the fact they came into your life to inflict whatever happened. You sit down for this because of love, because they wanted to give you an opportunity to have a choice to grow through that experience, to become someone who you could never have become without living through that experience. People who are in abusive situations, physically or emotionally, they have a choice to move out. It's not an easy choice, of course not, but it's a choice. And the people who move out, they grow and change and change their lives. It's always your choice. You get to grow because somebody did something seemingly to you, but it was a gift when you can thank them for who you got to be, and you know you've forgiven them. And I would also recommend doing some energy work around it to verify that you have 100% forgiven them, because if you haven't, that stuff's still sitting in your energy field, it's going to reoccur somewhere. Remember the brain thing? First I had the injury, and then I developed the tumor because I hadn't resolved all of the emotional issues I was holding there and the emotional issues tying into not getting to be my true self. Every morning when I do my meditations and then I do my rituals, I ask that I get to make a difference for at least one life each day, at least one. I hope I've made a difference for you because the way to put an armor around yourself, to protect you so that you never develop a tumor, to protect you so you never hurt your brain, is to live your true self, who you are, who you came here to be, and to forgive everyone and everything that ever happened to you. You only hurt you when you hold it in. Now, every week we also have a holy, you're holding a space for, which if you're on the ministry side is up there. I'm going to ask you this week to hold a space for me. If you say prayers, if you send light, if you send love, all of the above, I'm taking it in. Let me tell you something. I was very afraid to ask for help. I knew something was very wrong with me for a very long time. And... I was embarrassed. That's what it is. I was embarrassed to ask you for your help, for your love, for your light, for your prayers. Why was I embarrassed? Because I've had this idea, I've had it all my life, that I need to fix everything myself. Well, you know what? <laughs> we are not meant to live life on our own. We're meant to live in community. So I thought about Wayne Dyer, and I thought about Eckhart Tolle, and I thought about Lynn Grabhorn. Well, these are all people who teach you how you create your reality, right? We're all here because we're all still learning, and we teach what we most need to learn ourselves. And obviously for me, it's living in alignment with my true self, and it's doing my teaching through music and art. So... I'm free. I just forgave myself from the embarrassment of not being able to fix it myself or letting it happen, period. It's huge for me. And I thank you so much for listening. And I'm hoping I'm making a difference there for you because I have a suspicion that you or somebody you know is in the same position, finding it hard to ask for help when you know you really need it. One thing that I do for myself every day is I go to a site called Successimo. Successimo is a free site. You get to go there for free, and there are all these coaches and all these mentors, and I found a lot of my answers and a lot of my help there all for free. I'm one of the coaches. 
In fact, there's someone there, he's called the Face of Forgiveness, Dr. Forgiveness, and I'm using his material right now to help me to do all the forgiving that I hadn't done before. And trust me, I know a lot about it, I help people with it, and sometimes we just need that extra love. So I invite you to go on over to Successimo and get a lot of help for free. And you don't even need to have help. You want to grow your business? There's fantastic information there. How do you get there? You need to be referred. You go over to in Live. I'll put this so you can read it. Live in happinessnow.com forward slash successimo. That's live in happinessnow.com forward slash successimo. I can't recommend it highly enough. It's helped me hugely. I'm getting a lot of love, a lot of support from everyone over there. And I'm going to do something I don't usually do. You go on over to, if, if you have a question for me, you can email me, okay? At info at liveinhappinessnow.com. That's info at liveinhappinessnow.com. I thank you so much for staying here with me today, for going all the way through this. If you watched it all the way through, it's because you or someone you know can benefit from this information. It's always okay to ask for help. And it's important to recognize the patterns you're creating that cause you to need the help. I send you very great love. And I thank you for being in my world. Blessing.